Apart from being known for its cheap deals and its humongous megastores, it turns out that the biggest and most famous retailer in the world, Walmart, is surrounded by controversies, scandals, and multi-million dollar lawsuits against its poor and unsafe working conditions, its devastating impact on local communities, and a whole lot of corporate greed. The retail giant's problematic corporate policies in the U.S., however, are only the tip of the iceberg. For decades, Walmart's empire is being built on overseas markets through wage slavery and theft, child labor, and many other atrocities that are just now being unveiled to the public. The truth is that the cost of low prices is higher than most people even dare to imagine. That's why criticism of Walmart has become about as common as the store itself, and it appears to be getting worse over time. In today's video, we have gathered some of the most shocking facts about the big box retailer, which prove that the company does live up to its bad reputation. Before moving on, please support our work with a thumbs up in this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our future lists. Without further ado, here are 15 reasons why Walmart is the worst company in America. 1. The retail giant has a destructive impact on local communities. Many of us are aware that when a new Walmart store comes to town, the survival of our local mom and pop businesses is threatened by the retailer's large scale operations and ultra low prices. But something not everyone knows is that Walmart's presence doesn't actually do much to boost the economy of local economies in the short or the long run. In fact, a study conducted for the Los Angeles City Council found that local populations get poorer and small businesses face extensive net losses that oftentimes lead to their bankruptcy and layoffs of thousands of workers whose only option then becomes accepting Walmart's significantly smaller wages and exceedingly long work hours. The study found that the arrival of the big box retailer was estimated to cost an additional $9 million in state health care costs and a loss in pensions and retirement benefits so large that the increase in public assistance necessary to make up the shortfall could not even be covered by increased sales and property taxes. In other words, when Walmart moves in, they make things a whole lot worse for local communities by imposing unsustainable business models that affect other surrounding communities for years to come. Two, Walmart is one of the biggest drainers of public coffers of all time. Due to its ultra low wages, Walmart employees often need government benefits to have proper access to food and health care. The company routinely uses taxpayer money to finance its exponential corporate growth. A report released by the House Committee on Education and Welfare found that a 200-person Walmart store costs federal taxpayers approximately $420,750 a year or $2,103 per employee. These costs include $36,000 a year for free and reduced cost school lunches, $42,000 for Section 8 housing assistance, $125,000 for low-income family tax credits and deductions, $100,000 for additional Title I expenses, $108,000 for state children's health insurance expenses, and $9,750 for low-income energy assistance. 3. Women are paid significantly less, and pregnant workers are completely uncared for. Working conditions at the retail chain are particularly hard for women who are historically underrepresented and underpaid. The big irony is that 57% of the company's workforce is made up of women who are paid $1.16 less per hour compared to their male counterparts. That represents $1,100 less per year for doing the exact same jobs men do. And even in salaried positions, 
female employees earn on average $14,500 less than male employees. And if you're pregnant, it may be extra hard to work in such an environment. A series of lawsuits against the corporation reveals that pregnant women are forced to work extremely long hours and are frequently exposed to dangerous situations. Many of them are also fired while pregnant. 4. The big box retailer has a shameful history of discrimination against disabled and elderly employees. Since 2000, the company has accrued hundreds of multi-million dollar lawsuits filed by several disabled and elderly workers. The Supreme Court recently ruled that the company had to pay almost $300,000 over a suit filed against age and disability discrimination. But even in cases when justice is done, nothing really changes as the company keeps paying people off without changing their work ethic. 5. Safety issues are commonplace at Walmart. The last time the superstore chain updated its safety policies was almost a decade ago after the Occupational Safety and Health Administration found a number of violations at New York stores. On top of the inhumane conditions in factories overseas, Walmart has been endangering its workers in America too. One of the most criticized measures is the practice of lock-ins which literally consists of locking in overnight employees at several Walmart outlets to make sure they stay at their jobs. An expose by the New York Times revealed that this policy led to disconcerting situations, such as when a worker in Indiana suffered a heart attack, when hurricanes hit in Florida, and when workers' wives have gone into labor. These lock-ins were especially tough on immigrant workers who were employed as janitors, some of whom filed a class action suit against the corporation claiming that they were forced to work seven-day, 70-hour weeks for $1,500 a month, frequently being held at the store overnight. Since then, the company has pledged to roll back this questionable policy but this doesn't mean we should let them off the hook for having treated their employees with such disrespect in the past. 6. Believe it or not, wage theft has played a major part in guaranteeing Walmart supremacy in the retail world. In addition to its poor and unsafe working conditions, the superstore chain is famous for stealing money from its workers over the years. In the past, the company has forced their employees to buy their own uniforms, work through unpaid breaks, meal times, and many other situations when they were supposed to be off the clock. The retailer is also notorious for imposing 10 hours plus work days without offering any sort of extra compensation. And given that many of these unlawful demands are not documented, the retailer has perpetuated this cycle of theft over the course of many, many years stealing an estimated $1.8 billion from its workers since the turn of the century. 7. Its health care insurance plan is a joke. According to the New York Times, Walmart workers are sicker on average than most American workers. And yet, the billionaire enterprise has done everything in its power to provide the cheapest health insurance plan possible for its employees using taxpayer subsidies to fund most of these plans. With wages so low, the vast majority of Walmart employees can't afford health care at all. But even so, if they want to receive some sort of health benefits, they have to disburse 20% co-pays as well as a $5,000 out-of-pocket payment. This means that if a Walmart worker gets severely ill, they could end up with a $7,500 medical bill. 8. The company's empire is built upon slave wages and child labor. At least half of the goods we buy and consume from Walmart come from suppliers located in countries where it is legal to pay workers slave wages. A major example of this is Bangladesh, where the minimum wage for apparel industry workers is a dismal $37 a month. To make things worse, conditions in these facilities are often unsanitary and unsafe. A few years ago, a fire in one of these locations 
victimized 111 people. Before that, another fire had already cost the lives of 32 workers. Recently, a class action lawsuit alleged that women were forced to work seven days a week for over 13 hours without a single day off in more than six months. To top it all off, a Harvard Law study found that most of the employees at Walmart's overseas factories are underage. The children report being routinely assaulted, sometimes falling down from exhaustion, forced to work 12 to 14 hours a day, even some all night, 19 to 20 hour shifts, often seven days a week, for wages as low as six and a half cents an hour. The wages are so wretchedly low that many of the child workers get up at 5 a.m. each morning to brush their teeth using just their finger and ashes from the fire since they cannot afford a toothbrush or toothpaste, it reported. This is not only a matter of outsourcing American jobs to overseas markets in a move to cut costs, but the fact that the company creates a living hell for those who work at the core of its operations. For the longest time, the corporation is being accused to bribe local officials in foreign countries in an attempt to maintain many of the details out of the spotlight, but many of the stores that leaked show the reality they've been desperately trying to hide. 9. The massive retail chain has played a major role in the outsourcing of American jobs overseas. Even though the company tries to portray the image that it's deeply concerned with the well-being of everyday American workers, and that it's committed to bringing American products to American consumers, its actions speak louder than words. At least 26% of all Chinese imports that arrive in the United States are purchased by Walmart. And by insisting on the low prices that only slave wages can provide, the corporation has used its tremendous power in the marketplace to bully American firms into moving their production facilities overseas and doing the same. Once they ship their operations overseas, these firms are required to keep prices low at all costs to at least pretend they can compete with Walmart, even if it means forcing employees to work in sweatshop conditions for insufficient wages, producing products that the factories lose money on. 10. They control and bully their employees through electronic devices. A Bloomberg report revealed that the company has an electronic system tracking each task, telling them we should be done already or we're taking too long, according to one employee. One of them, who I identified as Larry, said, in my store alone, we keep having people quit because of the amount of work they pile on one person and they won't replace them. Instead, they make the rest of us work faster and harder, saying the task management system, which is basically a point of sale system, telling them how long it should take us to do our job, says we should be done already or we're taking too long. Tell me how working in the frozen food or dairy department by yourself should take less than all night, he exposed. In 2018, the company faced massive backlash for using audio surveillance technology that could allow it to record employees as well as its shoppers. The company tried to defend itself by saying that the technology could help it boost worker productivity by generating performance metrics for each employee based on cashier area sounds, such as checkouts, scanner beeps, and even conversations. 11. It's not that the company doesn't like people, it just doesn't like poor people. Walmart isn't just greedy, but the epitome of greed itself. While its overworked and underpaid employees struggle to get by, Walmart's executives make billions every year even as stocks and profit margins drop. In 2021, the Walton family received nearly $7 billion in tax breaks, with $4.9 billion coming from federal taxpayer subsidies handed to them because employee wages are so low. Currently, the company also holds almost $30 billion in offshore accounts, which remain untaxed by the U.S. government. 
And even when the company failed to meet investors' expectations last quarter, Walmart somehow managed to find enough money to give its CEO a $1.5 million bonus for being terrible at his job. 12. If you're an animal advocate, you probably shouldn't shop at Walmart. The way the company treats people is already disturbing, to say the least, but their disregard for animals is absolutely vile. A series of reports show that the retailer is one of the worst companies when it comes to ensuring that the animal products it sells come from suppliers that treat them well. In fact, according to Wiki, Walmart's cage-free eggs do not come from free-range producers, but rather industrial-scaled farms where the birds will be allotted between 1 and 1.5 square feet each, a stressful arrangement which can cause cannibalism. Walmart suppliers report higher hen mortality rates and present distinct environmental and worker health problems. Even more shockingly, in Mexico, Walmart stores host cock-fighting matches to entice customers to shop there. Simply put, if you care about animals, stay away from Walmart. 13. Naturally, it doesn't care about the environment, too. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection determined that Walmart has violated water quality laws and regulations at multiple construction sites over the past decades. The company has already been fined several times for similar violations across five different states. The United States Environmental Protection Agency and the Justice Department forced the giant retail chain to create an environmental management plan that is worth millions of dollars to improve its compliance with the laws at each site and to minimize the result of building on watersheds and building on streams. 14. Walmart has also been officially accused of fueling the nation's opioid epidemic. A CNN report detailed that the Department of Justice sued the company for billions of dollars in 2020 for encouraging the opioid epidemic by filling invalid prescriptions, failing to report suspicious orders, and violating many of the terms of the Controlled Substances Act, both as an operator of its pharmacies and its wholesale drug distribution centers. As one of the largest pharmacy chains and wholesale drug distributors in the country, Walmart had the responsibility and the means to help prevent the diversion of prescription opioids, said the Department Acting Assistant Attorney General of the Civil Division, Jeffrey Bassett Clark, who alleged that Walmart for years, quote, did the opposite, unquote. 15. The chain tries really hard to change the public's opinion about it. We all have heard about Walmart's bad reputation, but the more we know about its scandals, the more it tries to push forward the narrative that it's trying its best to do better and make reparations when it's obviously not making an effort to actually do so. For instance, their Our Walmart program is an attempt to discredit dissenters by showing positive representations of the company, even as its own staff floods social media with their personal horror stories. It also has the laughable Walmart Foundation's initiative to fight hunger that disregards the fact that its own workers face hunger and account for spending $300 million in taxpayer money on food stamps. It's questionable its campaign telling customers to buy American are a straight lie because even the company's new uniforms are made overseas. Unfortunately, the iconic store chain has become an example of capitalism at its worst. Four members of the Walton family, the founders of Walmart, collectively own more than $100 billion in wealth, which accounts for more than the entire 40% bottom half of U.S. income earners collectively own. They do everything they can not to give up a penny more than they have to, and being the richest family in the world, they also become the ugliest reflection of corporate greed. The problem 
is not being wealthy and influential, but building a huge fortune on the backs of extremely low-paid workers and using whatever strategies they can to avoid having to pay estate and inheritance taxes on their assets, and even using malicious techniques such as establishing a type of charitable trust that can shelter money from taxes and later put that money back into the pockets of family heirs, sometimes with a profit. Sam Walton was actually known for being morally opposed to charity. He said, we have never been inclined to give any undeserving stranger a free ride. And we feel very strongly that Walmart really is not and should not be in the charity business. It's in fact, everyone else who should do that to support their underpaid employees. Now that you know these disturbing facts, will you look at Walmart differently? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and we look forward to reading your comments below.